height. So now let us take one problem over variations. Solving a problem is the best way to understand a concept, right? So I have taken a problem. The problem is 15 books cost rupees 720. What will be the total cost of 29 books, right? So let's first tabulate the fact. The fact is we are given number of books and and then we are given cost of the books right so we are given if number of books are 15 the cost the cost is 720 the cost is given in rupees and now again we are given number of books as 29 and we have to find the cost so since we don't know the cost of 29 books I'm writing X in the row of cost. So this is the fact. Fact is when 15 books are bought, we have to pay 720 rupees. And we need to find out the cost of 29 books. That is how much money we need to pay when we are planning to buy 29 books. So as we know, cost of the books, cost we are paying is actually directly proportional to the number of books, isn't it? It means if we buy more books, we have to pay more money, right? Or you can say like this, if we have more money, we can buy more books, okay? That means cost of the books is actually equal to some k times constant times number of books, right? Isn't it? So if we apply this formula to the given facts is for in first case, the cost was 720 rupees. Cost was 720 rupees when we buying 15 books. So if we apply this newly found formula to the given fact, we will have 720 is equal to K multiplied by 15, which can be written as 15 K, right? Let us call this equation number one. And if we apply the same formula, on the second set of given fact, we will have x equal to 29k. Here we have assumed that we have to pay x rupees if we are planning to buy 29 books. So the cost becomes x. So cost is x. x equal to Number of books is 29 and k is the constant. So number of books multiplied by constant. So we get the second equation using the second set of facts where the cost was x because we didn't know the cost of 29 books. So x is equal to 29k, 29 times k. Now, as you can see, we have this k over here. This is the k and this is also the k. So you must be wondering that whether we are going to find the value of k. Yes, we can do that. We can first method can be finding the value of k using the equation one. This method of finding the value of constant we will understand later. But let's first 
concentrate on the method which I have in mind in which we need not to find the value of constant and hence we save on time. So if we say carefully both the, in both the equations right hand side we have k as constant and if we divide equation 2 by 1 we can get rid of that k and we need not to find the value of k. So if we divide equation 2 by 1, so we will get the left hand side of the second equation is x divided by left hand side of the first equation that is 720 will be equal to 29k which is the right hand side of the second equation divided by 15k which is the right hand side of the first equation. So here this k is there on the numerator and denominator both so it will get cancelled and from here if we multiply both the sides of this equation by 720 on the left hand side we will have x equal to 29 multiplied by 720 divided by 15 right so now let's divide both the numerator and denominator by 5. So this will be 5 3s are 15. Here we will have 5 1s are 5, 2, 2 22. So 5 4s are 20 and then again 5 4s are 20. And if we divide it again by 3, we will get 3 1s are 3. And on the numerator we will have 3 4s are 12 and 3 8s are 24. So we have got x is equal to 29 multiplied by 48. Right? This 48 is there. So from here we can see the value of x can be written as x equal to 29 multiplied by 48 which is equal to 1, 3, 9, 2. So, the cost of 29 books will be rupees 1392. So, this will be the cost of 29 books. This will be the cost of 29 books. And this is the method which I usually use because in this method I need not to find the value of k which is a constant. So in this method I need to do less calculation and this method comes very handy when there are a bit complex equations. In this case there were only two variables and only one variable to find and the equations were very simple very direct. So we can follow any method we want one is this method where we don't find the value of k. There is one more method in which from equation 1 we find the value of constant, this constant and then we put that value of k into equation number 2. So let's understand how do we find the value of k here. So let me write first equation again. The first equation says 720 is equal to 15 k. So let's divide both the sides by 15 in order to find the value of k. So our left hand side will be 720 divided by 15 and on the right hand side we will have only k because 15 divided by 15 is 1. So 1 multiplied by k is k right and let's divide 720 by 15 we will get 15 4s are 60 and 15 8s are 120 so from here we are we have got the value of k is equal to 48 and now let's substitute this k is equal to 48 in equation number 2 so if we substitute this value of k in equation number 2, we will get x equal to 29 
multiplied by 48 which is very much similar to the last step of our previous method. Here we will get x is equal to 29 multiplied by 48 is 1, 3, 9, 2, 8. So the cost of 29 books was here x and we have calculated and found the value of x here which is 1392. So the cost of 29 books will be rupees 1392. So whichever method we use we actually get the same value but I prefer the method in which we don't calculate the value of constant because in that case I actually save one calculation. In this particular problem you may not realize the effectiveness of the first method where we are not finding the value of k but when we get slightly complex equations every calculation matters and in that case the method in which we don't find the value of constant comes faster and makes our calculation easy and more effective.